What is going on guys, Gaston right here and in today's video we're going to be talking about the Sony a6900. Yes guys, another brand new camera from Sony, let alone this one is another APS-C camera. Now a lot of you guys may think, do we really need another camera from Sony? And in my opinion, yes, because Sony has made so many developments in the brand newer cameras moving forward that they can actually pour some of that technology into an APS-C body. Now, uh, Sony Alpha Rumor has shared some of the specs that they believe that they are accurate from some of their sources, but also want to talk about some of the things that they haven't said, and I think that this camera is going to have, or at least it's going to be kind of like a wish list of what this camera should be after, you know, releasing so many APS-C cameras. So, all that information right after the intro. And welcome back to the channel guys, Gaston right here. Let's talk about the Sony a6900. But before we continue, yes, something is different here. And a lot of you guys hit me up and asked me, Gaston, what's going on? We haven't seen videos from you in a while. And to be honest with you guys, I've been moving, moving really sucks. We've been packing for two months and a lot of my staff is actually in the middle of the studio. That's why, you know, I haven't been filming at the studio neither. But get familiar with this because until I clear up the studio, this is going to be kind of like our background for the upcoming video. So back to the Sony a6900 and let's talk about the first feature that Sony Alpha Room share and this one is going to be the sensor. Now it is said that Sony finally is going to depart from the uh, 24 megapixel and we're going to have something of higher megapixel density. Now they're saying that it's going to be around 30 megapixels but you know if I was Sony, probably I would add another 12 megapixels, you know, 12, 24, and 36. So I think that this camera may have, in my opinion, 36 megapixels rather than 30 megapixels. And that's gonna be actually really exciting to have, you know, an APS-C camera with higher resolution. Now, the other rumor that we've heard is that this camera is gonna have a similar body as the Sony a7C, actually identical to the Sony a7C. Now remember, when the Sony a7C was announced, it was referred as a body as the Sony a6600, but in this version, we're hearing the opposite, that this camera is gonna be like the Sony a7C. And the Sony a7C is a much thicker body and it's a little bit bigger than the Sony a6600. And in my opinion, it makes a lot of sense to start housing those APS-C, you know, stock cameras in bigger bodies because one of the things that we also hear is that this camera is gonna have an improved IBIS. Now, Having the camera in a bigger body may allow, you know, for more motion of that sensor, you know, therefore, you know, having a nicer image stabilization in this APS-C cameras, because let's be honest with you guys, even the A6600 that has image stabilization, in my opinion, that IBIS is pretty much useless when you compare it to other camera manufacturers with reliable image stabilization, such as Fuji X-T4, just to mention one brand. Now, another thing that we are hearing, and this one is a wild rumor, is that this one may be the first camera without a shutter, a shutterless APS-C camera. And if that's the case, that is going to, in my opinion, allow for a better image stabilization because we're not gonna be dealing with the space of the shutter. But I think the Sony could actually introduce for the first time a camera with um, you know, variable ND filters. Now, if you don't have the shutter, probably you have that additional space now for more technology. And can you imagine an APS-C body with, you know, built-in ND filters? Now, Sony has proven in other brands that, yes, you can actually fire without a shutter, no problem. You know, we don't have a shutter in video. So Sony has also developed that technology and the A1 is a testament that, you know, we are ready there to ditch the shutter just like we ditch, you know, the mirror you know, a few years ago. If this camera is gonna have a similar body as the Sony a7C, we are gonna have the same flip to the side screen, you know, tiltable, and we're gonna have potentially the brand new menus. Now, I don't think we're gonna have the touch, um, you know, capabilities of the menu. I wish they actually add that. But in my opinion, if Sony is releasing a brand new camera with improved specs, chances are that we are gonna have a pro body uh, APS-C camera coming from Sony, you know, in the upcoming months or maybe next year. And to be honest with you, you know, I wish that this camera is that camera because like I mentioned before, you know, all those that actually enjoy 
um, you know, the APS-C system would actually benefit from a larger body, especially like I was mentioning before, you know, wildlife photographers, sport photographers, especially when logging those long lenses, you know, you want something with a bigger grip, you know, bigger body, and obviously with the EVF, you know, center, you know, aligned with the lens. Now, once again, you know, this camera is also gonna be marketed as a vlogging camera. I kind of like start feeling a little bit bothered about that uh, statement because the Sony A7C has been also you know, considered a vlogging camera, but in my opinion, it's a very powerful camera and I've used it for a lot of professional work. Now, when it comes to the burst capability of this camera, this camera may have the same, you know, burst capability of the Sony A6600, but now obviously it's gonna be pushing more megapixel resolution. Now let's talk about videos because this is another area where, you know, we kind of like had almost the same in all the latest, you know, APS-C releases, but this may be the first camera that is gonna push 4K video at 10-bit 420 or maybe even 422. It is time for Sony to ditch completely the 8-bit. You know, people are wanting to color grade, you know, producers, you know, cinematographers and even content creators. You know, we like to grade our footage right now and a lot of the times you know we find that limitation with a bit so if they don't do that i think that this camera may be kind of like a camera that a lot of people may consider passing but if this camera is going to have 10 big capabilities remember there are a lot of people that haven't even moved to full frame and this camera may be a camera giving them a reason to stay with full frame and you know enjoy a lot of the uh, aps-c glass that they already have purchased so Sony, please make sure that this camera has 10-bit video capabilities. And if you cannot give us 422, at least give us 420. Now, all the other cameras have cap at 4K up to 30p. And this one may have a faster, um, you know, frames per second. I don't think we're going to see 120 frames per second in 4K, 10-bit, 422 or 420. But we may have 4K up to 60p in this camera. Sony has to play the cards right here because we have seen that, you know, the technology is there. They don't have an APS-C camera that can do this. And this alone can actually, you know, uh, make this camera very desirable. Now, we don't know much more, but let's talk a little bit about the price. What can Sony price this camera? And it is said that this camera is going to be priced at around, you know, the same price of the Sony A7C, which is at about, what, $1,800 or something like that. So yes, this is going to be more than the Sony A6600, and I think that people are going to be paying for a camera like this one, especially if the camera, you know, doesn't have, um, you know, a shutter. You know, some people will be curious about that. Also, if the camera is going to have improved image stabilization, and can you imagine, you know, the craze that can happen if this camera has built-in ND filters when you no know, the other cameras, you know, do have right now, unless you go to the Cinema FX6 and nor the fx3 has i mean this camera can be a really good camera if it's affordable it could be a good sell for sony so guys let me know what else you want this camera to have drop the comments down below with your wish list of features and we're going to continue a report regarding this upcoming camera stay tuned and welcome back to the channel see you in the next video